in that spirit, that Lamb of God, I come just as I am. <clears throat> so the last fortnight or so, we have had uh, <clears throat> quite a few challenges locally and internationally. It's always good to reflect on what has been happening in the world. Uh, I think the last, we have lost politicians, we have lost uh, businessmen, we have lost preachers, all kinds of people we have lost. And uh, it's always good to look back and see what, what could the Lord be telling us in some of these things. From polit- some of them, we know the causes of their death, others we don't know. All that is going, is happening. And that is the time when we sit like here now, where we reflect on such things. It's not so much that we think about their death, but think about, okay, if things happen like that, what about us? How do we stay? Where do we start before God? How are we? Uh, what kind of destiny are we talking about for ourselves? Okay, I don't intend to say all the people who have died, obviously, I don't know all of them. And I'm sure you, I'm sure you also don't know all of them. <laughs> But I'm sure you know a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah. That one, we all know. <clears throat> Whose death, we may not even sure how it came. But never mind, that's not the point. That has happened. A politician. Another important politician of the first generation of liberators, Kenneth Kauda, yes. dying of, at 97 years. 97 is not very young. So although they may not say what caused, what caused his death, I think we can attribute it to natural causes. Eh? <laughs> I mean, sure, when you are 87, I think it's always good to, to see natural causes, you know, as part of what's bringing you to go. The doctor of the University of Nairobi, that one we are told committed suicide. Committed suicide because she, in her mind she was frustrated when she was working on patients and somehow I think three kids died or something. So she decided then why leave? I might as well go. So that one went, not a politician, not very rich, not very poor, not very old, they're in the middle. Then we got another young, another young man who is younger than Keegan, who passed on. Keegan, you are quite a good starter because whenever I see you, <laughs> I see the young men and I kind of now try to put you in the balance, to balance it. <laughs> so this one was 27 years, uh, he was in the media and uh, he just, just passed on that one, at least they knew the cause was cancer, he died of cancer. Then of course we know a great businessman, Chris Kirubi, who passed on also of cancer. A man who God had blessed so much, he did not have to be taken to Kenyatta for ICU or Aga Khan. He had his own ICU at home, you know. So you die from there easily. You don't have to die from outside there. You die there easily, <laughs> you know. And surrounded by your people, you know. It's a good death to die surrounded by your people easily at home. So. We look at that and we thank God that at least for him, he had come to know Christ. Because at the end of the day, we are talking about destiny. Remember today we are talking about guaranteed destiny, or destiny to guaranteed. So it's good when you get such. But the one who had died a little earlier than all of them is this famous man, T.B. Joshua. I'm sure a number of you know of, have heard of T.B. Joshua. Yeah. True? Yes. So T.B. Joshua, is one controversial person who some people are not sure whether he was a prophet of God or of the devil or there between. You know, it's possible to belong to none. <laughs> You're just there between. You're just prophesying for yourself. <clears throat> that can happen. But since I heard of T.B. Joshua, I've been doing quite a bit of research on him. Listen both to those who love him and also those who hate him. Because normally in life you have to understand the balance. Whoever you are, there must be people who hate you. Never imagine that when you study, everybody laughs you and says, Wow, that's level. Like, Praise the Lord. No. <laughs> no. That will never happen. And don't imagine that whenever you study, everybody hates you. No, that will never happen. You have heard of devil's advocates? You know, those people who really come and they try to make sure that even if you are the worst, you are thought of failure. 
there's something good about you to be said. So to be Joshua, they have said so many bad things about him, also very good things about him. Like I said, I've tried to do quite a bit of study on him. Uh, I like studying when I see men of God, especially controversial ones. Uh, I like studying them quite a bit. And uh, I think the last person who spoke about him in another convincing manner was another great preacher in Nigeria called Ayo, Pastor Ayo. It's one of the great preachers that they have out there. <clears throat> And his comment was like this, T.B. Joshua, for you to tell us you are a believer, we need to know when did you believe? Because salvation is not just a process. To be born, there must be a day you are born. You know when you are born here on this earth, you have your birthday. So T.B. Joshua, when were you born? Number one. Two, who pastored you or who mentored you? And I think those are questions you could not answer. Uh, because, you know, we don't have too many, many Melchizedek today. You know, Melchizedek, no father, no mother. <laughs> you just appear on the scene. <laughs> I think it's good that uh, if I look at Keegan, I can. Keegan, why do I keep talking about him? <laughs> you, know, you are able to see Sunday school, he was here. We saw him grow up. And then he joined the youth, he became chairman of youth. We have seen him. So I think really, if you are really going to be a man of God or a woman of God, we need to be able to locate you somewhere that you are able to say, yes, you worked at a so-and-so. If you ask me who has mentored me, I can tell you for sure. I mean, it's not, a, I, do not, I do not just appear on the scene. I have been there mentored by people and I believe I have mentored other people. So really, for me, I tend to be leaning more towards that direction on this great man, T.B. Joshua. So was he true or false prophet? It's for you to decide, but I think it's important that we need to be sure of ourselves. Not so much about him now, but what about us? So the topic there today is, uh, our topic today is destiny guaranteed. That's really what we're working on, destiny guaranteed. So we want to know what destiny are we guaranteeing, or what destiny is being guaranteed. And our reading passage is Matthew chapter number 28. We can start from verse 16 <clears throat> all the way up to 20, in particular verse 20. You see the words guiding us, but I think we can do the rest of it. <clears throat> so the 11 disciples, that's because there was no Judas, the 11 disciples traveled to Galilee. That's where he had told them to meet, to meet them. Jesus had told them, let's meet in Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had directed them. So they are not just going there because they want to go for a picnic. They are going there because they have been directed. You go to this mountain, I'll meet with you there. So of course they knew when they are going there, they were going so that they can meet with him. When they saw him, remember he had been on with them for a long time, then died, then came back to life. So when they saw him, the Bible says they worshipped him. That's the first thing that they did. They worshipped him. But even in worshipping, some were opening one eye. I mean, if they were closing eyes. Eh? One of the, they were closing eyes, yes, we worshipped you, but one eye opened just in case. In case this is a spirit. Because we are still not, some of them were still not sure. So the Bible says, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. I'm not so sure it was Thomas. <laughs> it was possibly another one. So they see him coming, and they doubt him. And of course, John 21 can tell you how they doubted when they saw him in the, when they, when, at the Sea of Galilee. So he saw them. So when he saw them, he came near. So I would imagine that when they saw him, he was from that some distance. But now he comes near. So when he came near, that's when he made the pronouncements to them. That was not time for many things. Just some very serious pronouncements. So he said, All authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. He's telling them, Now look, go to heaven, you find my authority there. Come here on earth, my authority is here. So anywhere you walk, I am there. My authority is there. So I think if you can get that concept, that he's telling them, 
whether in heaven or on earth, my presence is felt. I am there. And not just there, but there with authority. It's there. So given that scenario, or with that in mind, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I will be with you all the days. I will be with you. Uh, uh, and remember, there's something for them to remember. He tells them, now remember that I will be with you all the time, or to the end of age. And I think that's where our subject, our topic is coming from. Destiny guaranteed. So he's telling them, not now, not tomorrow, but up to the end of age, that's guaranteed. And that's really our topic. Uh, we are talking about uh, destiny guaranteed. So the question is, which destiny are we talking about? Which is the destiny? So perhaps that's where we need to start. What destiny are we talking about? And I want to put two destinies in mind. The first one is the church destiny. Church destiny is it guaranteed. Then after that, individual destiny. My individual destiny is it guaranteed. So I want to start by saying, therefore, uh, that the church destiny is, is guaranteed because of that promise he said, he gave. So he said, as you go there and make disciples, and that's now start the churches, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all that, which is what we do in church. That one, I promise I'll be with you. So in other words, they are not just going there and saying, we have our theological position, which we are going to present. No, no, we are talking about his presence with them. And that's really what guarantees the church. So he says, I'll be with you there. And in Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 8, which was also about the same time when he was living, he told them, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So that you can do the same thing. You shall be my witnesses in Judea, uh, I mean in Jerusalem, uh, Judea, Samaria, and not the most parts of the earth. So you shall receive power. So although now he is gone, his presence being with them, now through the Holy Spirit. You receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, you know, Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of, end of the earth. So apart from him now telling them, I am with you, He's now showing them how he will be with them. So I'll be with you through the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is going to be with you, it's going to be part of you. So you're going to work with him. So he's telling them, the church, the destiny of the church is guaranteed because I will be with you, my presence will go with you, but this time through the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit is going to accompany you. So my presence therefore will go with you. And without my presence, then you can be sure you are de the destiny of the church is guaranteed. But then that would remind them of what we had told them earlier in Matthew chapter number, number 16, when he told them, verse 16 up to 18, when he told them, I'm building my church. That's Matthew 16, 16 up to 18. So there he's telling them, if you can have that one, Matthew 16, verse 16 up to 18. Simon Peter answered, you know, after an argument, who are you? And uh, who do people say that I am? Simon Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus responded to him, Simon, son of Jonah, you are blessed because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven, I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the forces of heads will not overpower it. Destiny, we are talking about destiny guaranteed. The powers of hell will not be able to prevail against it. Please mark that when you're saying, as long as we are talking about the church of Jesus Christ, whether it is Hitler or anybody else who comes, they will not be able to overcome it. And as a matter of fact, I need to put it to us that the Church of Jesus Christ thrives best when we have Hitler or somebody else opposing it. As long as everything is going fine and anybody can be a Christian, you can be the worst criminal but a Christian because, you know, it's fashionable to be a Christian. That time Christianity does not thrive very well. 
But the minute it is at a persecution, God forbid that we should have persecution. But I'm telling you, that persecution here in Jogo Kenyatta. A number of people here will be so serious as brothers and sisters, so serious that some of the little scobos we hear may not be there anymore. I'm not praying for persecution to come, but should it come, it will be very helpful for some. <laughs> for some, yeah, because you'll be, you'll be able now to really be where we should be. I mean, the kind of things we deal with the times, you read the word that now, these people, these people ever believe. But persecution comes, separates the believers from non-believers. But when we have everything going on fine, you mix them together. You know, goats and cows, and we are never sure which is which. So anyway, the point I'm getting at is, as long as you are talking about the Church of Jesus Christ, it does not matter what will come its way. Nothing will be able to overcome it. That is the guarantee that we have, that uh, gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it, as long as that is the church. And why is it so? Ephesians chapter number 5, the chapter that we love talking so much about marriage. Today I'm not on, not on marriage, today I'm on the church. Ephesians chapter number 5, uh, verses 25 up to 27. Ephesians 5, 25 up to 27. Why is it so? Why is it, has it been protected so much? Because he says, Husbands love your wives. And if your husband here today is Father's Day, please love your wife. Eh? Just as also Christ loved the church, the sisters have said, Amen, praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm not sure they have been loved much. So, husbands love your wives. <laughs> Just as also Christ loved the church. And he gave himself for her <clears throat> to make her holy, cleansing her in the washing of water by the word. He did this. Why did he do this? To present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but holy and blameless. So he did this because he cherishes that bride. So why is this church going to be uh, to end up now in uh, uh, guaranteed destiny? Because it's a bride that he loves. Uh, it's a bride that the Lord loves. And because he loves that bride, he's going to protect it at all costs. So I want to put it therefore to us, ladies and gentlemen, whether we are in the church or we are not, the church will start. Whether we are, I am here or you are, I am not, the church will start. Whether you are here you are, or you are not, the church will start. And I'm not trying to chase you away, no, no. <laughs> but whether you are here or not, the church of Jesus Christ will start. Because it is his bride. And because it is his bride, he protects it. You should, have, you should see people when they are getting married. I mean, that whole week, they really protect each other. They, they try to make sure that, you know, she is safe. Wherever she walks, and if you are planning to get married, that's one of the assignments you need to do, to have. That make sure every step you know where she is. We don't want anybody to put her out, hijack her or anything else. No, no, you don't want that. So, to protect her. So, the Church of Jesus Christ, the destiny is guaranteed because he's the bride of Christ and because he's the bride of Christ, he is there to protect her. He wants to protect her. So he will not let her just go. You know, nothing, nothing will happen which he does not allow to happen. So I think it's important to know. We are talking about the destiny of the church. So the church's destiny is guaranteed. Go to Revelation, it's guaranteed. Everywhere you go, it's guaranteed. So let me start on that one by saying, Whatever else happens on this earth, the church will thrive. The church of Jesus Christ will thrive. Not because of me, not because of you, but because of him. Yes. So he has guaranteed that one. So guaranteed destiny or destiny guaranteed, the first one is the church. That destiny is guaranteed. So whichever way we go about it on this earth, that one is going to remain. But also, the individual destiny. Is my destiny guaranteed? Yes, it is. Because he said, those who come to me, I will know I cast out. So as long as I've come to, please make, remember it is those who come to me, those who come to him. So it's not just anybody. That's, that's, that's John chapter 1 and verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many, so that puts you among the many. 
So if you want to be, if we are in the many, he came to his own, and his own people did not deceive him. But verse 12, as many as he deceived him, all those who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God, to those who believe in his name. So that's another guarantee we are given. So the church is guaranteed, but me as a part of the church now become guaranteed because he said, if I come to him, he will give me that right, that position. I will take that position as I and belong to him. So it is not a debate of, can it, does it work or does it not work? No, no, no. It is his promise. He said, as many as came to me, I know we have the Calvinists, I believe of those who have chosen in the beginning and those who are not. But when you go by this one, as many as received him, he gave the power. So don't go with that theology of, uh, maybe I'm not among those who have been destined to go. To. No, 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 no. First of all, go by what you know. What you don't you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> because we laugh so much dealing with what we don't you know. And we don't want to take care of what we know. So what we know is that, but all who received him, he gave them the right to become the children of God. And in, in Acts also, when Peter was pe preaching, the same thing he says, all those who come to him, you're not cast out. So that's really what you're talking about. So my destiny, therefore, is guaranteed as long as I know where it's starting at the cross, not anywhere else. The cross is where we're starting. So my, my, my destiny is guaranteed. Let's look at Psalms 73, verse 24, a verse that I love so much. Psalms 73, and verse 24. You guide me with your counsel. So remember, it is him guiding me. You guide me with your counsel. And afterwards, you take me up in glory. So you're talking about my destiny, you have guaranteed. So it's not where I'm debating about it. You are the one who is guiding me with your counsel. And then after that, you're going to receive it glory. So I want to put it to us, dear for ladies and gentlemen, that when you come to those guarantees, the church is guaranteed with or without me. I am guaranteed as long as I go within his program. And his program is all those who come to me are not cast away. I will not, you know, I, I will not keep away. I'll keep to, to myself. I give them the right to become the children of God. So that is important for me. But then how do I come in? What's my role in all this? For the guarantee to take place, do I just sit idle and say, sit, sit plenty and say, well, you have a guarantee. There are those who sit plenty, and because salvation is a free gift of God, they will get there, but the Bible says receive, they were saved through fire. You see people who are saved through fire, so all their clothes were burnt, so they got there naked, but they will get there somehow. With nothing, with nothing to show. So that's possible. As long as you have come to Christ, your salvation is guaranteed by faith. Because we come to Him by His, his grace and by faith. And by faith, it's guaranteed. So you, that's one they are not true about it. But then, you imagine going before Christ, you have nothing to show for your life here on earth. You have nothing to show at all. Now that doesn't look very good. So, what are we talking about? What is our role for the church's guarantee and for the individual guarantee? And that goes again to Matthew, the chapter number, two, the, the, the chapter that we read on uh, chapter number 16 and verse 19 this time. We read up to 18, but now verse 19 tells us, tells, us, tells us something which I had never quite seen until recently. Controversial has been and I've always been seeing the controversial part, but there's one I had not quite seen. I will give you the keys. Please mark is not key. So Peter is not being given a key because some of us keep saying, now Peter was given the key to open and shut. Open and shut, no, no. I'll give you keys. So today I want to talk a little about keys. And not uh, just mention one or two keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I like the word which following. What is the next word? Not whoever, but whatever. Please mark the difference between whatever and whoever. Otherwise, you go biting everybody. <laughs> you know, I, I've got situations where now 
People are biting others. I bite you. I bite. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not talking about whoever you bite. It is whatever I, you bite. So, so please make the, see the difference. Whatever and whoever are very different. Eh? So let's not go biting people. But says, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bite on earth is bowed in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth is already lost in heaven. So there are keys which are expected for me as a Christian, for the church as an institution, if you are going to make it. If this guarantee is going to work, and the key I'm about to talk, I know there are many keys, but right now there are two that I want to mention, which are so key, keys which are very key. You know, extremely key so that you can <clears throat> and by that today my summary you can see it's one page I'm fin about finished eh? so today I will not take you take you long normally when you're on one page you are doing fine <clears throat> so the key the key I find in again in Matthew chapter number six Matthew chapter number six <clears throat> Verses 5 to 8. <clears throat> Very well known verses. I would want to compare to have those, those verses 5 to 8 and 16 to 18. Very parallel passages. Whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. Because they love to pray starting in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. I assure you they've got their reward. So that's negative. Say, so please don't pray like, like this. It was very important for Jesus to sh show us how not to pray. So he's telling us don't do it this way. So don't be like the hypocrites. But please, it's whenever you pray. In other words, you expected you are going to pray. But then he goes, verse 6 now tells us how to do it. When you pray, so key number one, it does not matter who you are. If you are a Christian without prayer, my brother, you'll be a limping Christian. If you are a church without prayer, you'll be a limping church. The guarantee, we are guaranteed. <laughs> the guarantee is there. But the limping you'll be doing here, I mean, I mean I'm not trying to, uh, to say that uh, uh, if you are physically limping, there is a challenge. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about spiritual limping. If you are the kind of person who every little temptation coming your way, you are fallen. So every evening you are repenting and confessing the sins you did in the day, which happened to be quite a number. Tomorrow you repeat the same sins. My friend, what are you talking about? Guarantee is there because you are talking, destiny is guaranteed because it's by faith. But then the limping kind that every day there's no victory. So I want to say, to put it to us, if you are really going to be Christians who are going to succeed, we must be people who are given to prayer. N not pray for food. Pray, pray for food is good. Or thank God for food. It's good to thank God for food. But I'm talking about seriously, if you really want God's program in your life for your servant for the church, then prayer has to be there. So when he says verse 6, when you pray, Go into your previous room and whatever, whatever. So when you pray, not, not if you pray. So please mark that it's when you pray. So it's not, so it's not, uh, it's not something conditional. I mean, you have to. It's expected. I'm sure when you say the word when you pray, it means you are going to do it. Or you expect to do it. So when you pray, go into your chamber. So you have been taught the way not to do it. And then you are shown how to do it. But let's now go to the verse 16, which now are parallel to this one. The prior to this one, verse 16 of the, the same Matthew chapter 5, quite parallel to this. So verse 16 says the following. Whenever you fast, do not be sad-faced like the hypocrites. So it's telling us how not to. So when you fast, don't be, don't do it this way. So that's a prior of verse 5 of the same chapter, which says, whenever you pray, don't do it this way. So you have told, whenever you fast, don't do it this way. So how do you do it? So verse number 17, 
But when you fast, what are the words? Isn't that the exact parallel of verse 5, 6, 6? When you fast, not if you fast. So I'm trying to put it to myself and to ourselves. To yourself and to myself. A Christian's destiny, guaranteed as it is, I have a part, part to play myself. Fasting, I know it's not one of the most loved themes. You, time and again we do without food, not because we were fasting, but because we didn't have the food. Uh, and, and so the Lord can allow a lot of that to keep coming. Yeah, n- now that you do not want to do it voluntarily, then he gets you to do it because you didn't have an option. You know, so time and again, maybe when you find yourself having no food to eat, it's because you have not been fasting and the Lord, you know, knows it's good for you. And since you don't want to do it, then he's going to help you do it. So, so we are not talking about hunger fast, hunger, hunger, I mean hunger strike. No, we are talking about when you, when you, when you, you fast, in other, it's a choice you have made, but when you fast, put oil on your head and all that and all that. So what am I trying to say there? I'm putting this with my brothers, that when God, Jesus tells Peter, I'll give you the keys to bind and to lose. These are the kind of keys he's talking about. It's not where Peter goes and says, all of you people, I release you to be saved. To do. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. I've been to meetings where that is done. And I've sat there and somebody has done a very good thing. And so I bless you with eternity. No, no, I don't think that's what you... <laughs> You know, I, I don't think that's what we are talking about here. <laughs> you know, that blessing of eternity, I don't think it's what we are talking about here. We are talking about the keys that we have been given for you now to come and lose. So, to lose people to come to Christ is where we are now coming to with prayer and fasting. And I'll give you some examples of it. Please stand with me to Acts chapter number 13. Chapter number 13, Acts chapter number 13, verses 1 to 3. <clears throat> So we talk about when you pray and when you fast. In the local church at Antioch, like in the local church of IDC, you know it's a local church like it was in Antioch. There were prophets and teachers, like there must be some here. I'm not sure who is the prophet, who is the teacher here, but they are there. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger. So Barnabas, Simon, and Lucius, the Selene, Manean, a close friend of Herod. Please being a friend of the, the, the president is not a sin. <laughs> yeah, this fellow was a friend of hello. Eh? <laughs> a good friend of hello, the church rock, and so. So these are people who are there. They were prophets and teachers. So we are not talking about just people who are just come to know Christ yesterday morning, and so they don't know what they are talking about. They are already established as prophets and teachers. But when that's going on, there's something one thing they are going to they are doing which now gets them on the right track with this guarantee we are talking about, with this uh, uh, destiny guaranteed. As they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, please mark the word, what were they doing? Ministering to the Lord and? So what happened when that's going on? The Holy Spirit said, do you want the Holy Spirit to say things? He, the keys. When they are praying and fasting, when they were doing that, that's now when the Holy Spirit came and spoke to them. And I want to put it to us, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. If you truly want the destiny of the church guaranteed not limping, if you really want our own destiny guaranteed not limping, prayer and fasting is not optional. It is something that has to be there. So as they were doing that, uh, as they were doing that, the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and so for the work that I've called them to. We are talking about a program. This is not just a church program where people thought it's a good idea. And I'm not against our sitting down with pastors and we planning a program and all that. It's very important. And as a church to plan programs, as the youth, everybody to plan a program. But I want to put it to, you, to us, 
that if you are really going to have a success, when you are going to have God in the initiated program, you know these days we talk about Wajiko uh, uh, initiated, you know, uh, those, kind, those, uh, those things that you can have there to change the constitution, uh, whether it is uh, by popular initiative, there are those which are, which are said to be, what are they called, those which are said to be eternity crosses, like this is an eternity cross, you know. <laughs> you know, there are some eternity crosses which you don't, <laughs> you don't joke with. So, here, we are saying we can sit down and make programs. And I dare say, unfortunately, many churches today are on human programs. They have nothing to do with the Spirit of God coming through. But the life is going on, you know, church program to build, to build a cathedral. Yes, cathedrals are coming up. Nothing wrong with building a cathedral. You know, teaching programs, nothing wrong with that. Bible study programs, nothing wrong with that. Prayer, prog prayer study, prayer uh, fellowships, nothing wrong with that. But if you see what was happening in Antioch, the church of Antioch, the key, as they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me, Barnabas and so for the work that I have called them. Please mark how many they were. They were uh, already we have quite a number of the local church, those who were prophets and teachers. Barnabas was there, Simeon was there, called Niger, Lucius, uh, the Selene, Manean, the friend of Herod, uh, and so. Five of them. But out of those five, he says, I want two. Not the entire team. They are prophets and teachers, but give me two of them. I need Paul and I need Barnabas to set them out there. And then after that, borrowing from a great man of God known as Derek Prince, after that, that's when they now became apostles. So, for them to graduate from being teachers and prophets to become apostles, went through this. Then they said, verse 3, then after they had fasted again. Please remember what the Spirit has spoken. <laughs> As it said to them. But they said, yes, thank you, Holy Spirit, you have done it. We will fast even more. For that reason, we will fast even more. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the more you got the presence of the Lord in prayer and fasting, the more you feel you, don't know, you haven't done it. You want to do it more. But when you have not tried and you say, hmm, how does it go to do that for a day without food, except when it's not available? <laughs> how, does, how does it work? When you do that, you keep arguing with yourself, and you don't get there. So again, borrowing from uh, this man of God called uh, Derek Flings, he says he went to preach somewhere about fasting. And there was a lawyer seated in the group. And the lawyer, when he heard him say, he said, okay, I'll try tomorrow. So the following morning he tried. The unfortunate thing is that when you are fasting, it's when good food comes. <laughs> Before that, you may not have seen good food around. <laughs> Especially for us men, when you are fasting, that's when your wife chooses to cook the best food. Before that, she was cooking. For me, okay, there is what I like. So, so, so as long as my wife is cooking, okay, there I'm safe. So when I'm fasting, that's when you cook the you cook the gedeli. Okay, if you cook with Ugari, you have no challenge because, I mean, that can go. But she would choose to cook the best food. So anyway, this lawyer, whenever he passed, good food. So the stomach really bothered him. So by the evening, he was so tortured by the stomach that now he stood up and told stomach, you have tortured me so much today. Now, tomorrow I'll torture you. By making sure you don't eat anything also. I'll fast again tomorrow. So what I'm saying is, the more you fast, the more you feel like you want to continue with it. Because, I mean, it got so sweet that God is working with you. So, so what did they do? As they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me, Barnabas and so, for the work that I have called them to do. Then after they fasted again, prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them off. So I'm putting it to us, therefore, for the, that destiny of the church to be accomplished, not limping, but in victory, we need to have these keys to be able to lose and also to be able to bite. We need to do that. 
So we find that in Matthew, that's Matthew, uh, that's the Matthew part and the Acts part where they prayed and that. For nations, I'm sure you already know that very well, you are quite familiar with Second Chronicles, chapter number 7 and verse number 14. Is a very, very, every time they go for national prayers, that's the one they're going to use. You know, the only challenge with national prayers sometimes is you mix with all kinds of things, and those are things some of us are having a trouble with. Uh, it's called secretism, where you now mix. It's a hybrid. I don't think the, I don't think you're going to be hybrids. But anyhow, let's go to Second Chronicles. The bad bit you almost won't finish with. Second Chronicles chapter number seven, and verse number fourteen, which says, "My people, which people?" Huh? Which people? Who are called by? Which name? You are talking about Yahweh, Jehovah. See your guy who are Nyaga? No. So when we talk about my people, here we are talking about the people who are called by God's name, and that is by Jehovah's name. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, and there is no better way of humbling yourself, my brother, my sister. Than in, than in fasting. The minute you are fasting, you are turning the stomach away. Watch, I'm an enemy. Don't bother me. I'll bother you now. So you are you're humbling yourself. So if you humble yourself, pray and seek my face and turn from your evil ways, then he promises to do the following. I'll do the following for you. So we want a church destiny to be so, so, so guaranteed, not limping as a church. Humble ourselves, pray, seek God's face, turn from our evil ways. Then you hear from heaven, forgive our sins, and heal our land. So this is what I'm trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, is we are talking about that guarantee is there. I'm guaranteed heaven. That's what I'm not to is about it. But if I want to go with breakthroughs and, and uh, victories, then I need to have the keys. And to me, those two keys are so critical. Very, very key keys that you need to use them to be able to unlock, to be able to lose, to be able to buy it. So when you get situations where the devil really is thriving and really doing a lot of good, a lot of, a, a lot of havoc, then you can go and say, I will bite you now with these keys. So don't use the keys to bite human beings. Please don't. It's whatever. Uh, whatever you bite. So we want to bite them that way. So Chronicles, is telling us we need to be able to set our set our set our nations, our countries, our governments. We want to be able to pray for them, and for us to be able to do that, we need to humble ourselves. So the Bible says, "Humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you up." That's what we need to do. So, finally, conclusion. So, how do you conclude? We are talking about guaranteed destiny or destiny guaranteed. For this destiny to be great for me as a person, for us as a church, we need to cooperate with God as a part of, as a big part of the bride of Christ. We need to cooperate with God in the work He's doing for us to be able to accomplish that, for, for Him to accomplish that through us. So and that's where now we have to say, and I find this very, very important for us as church. That it has to start at the cross. And in the week, I don't know whether it was sent to all of us by this our brother in Tanzania called Emmanuel. He sent this, he sent that song, Musalaba Dio. Was it sent to all of us? You know, which is at the cross, at the cross. That's where it began. And that's where it begins. So I dare say there are so many people in the church today. But they are not even part of the Church of Jesus Christ. <laughs> they may be part of a congregation, registered members. You know, these days people get registered from all over. I've seen hundreds of people saying they have been registered in the Kano and they have never registered there, but they like members. <laughs> you know, others registered in uh, all kinds of parties. It's possible to be registered in a church, but you are not a member. <laughs> you are not a member of the Church of Christ. You are a member of the Church local but not a member of Christ. So we are saying, 
we want that destiny guaranteed, it starts at the cross. So we have to we have to cooperate with God, with Christ at the cross, so that as we sing at the cross, at the cross, I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. For that to happen, it has to start there. And I dare say that this world does not have to be the issues. It's either the cross or the world. Nothing there between. You don't come there and say, for me, I'm neither for the cross nor for the world. No. When you see you're not for the cross, already you have chosen you're for the world. So if you're seated here today, and in your mind you're saying, no, 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 no. For me, both can wait. No, no, they can't wait. <laughs> if the cross waits, then the world has taken over. If the cross takes over, then the world waits. So we don't have two options about that one. It's either, it's either this or the other. So the cross or the world. So, I started by saying, the last fortnight, there have been quite a few losses. And a number of those that have been lost, we are not too sure where they are going, what their destiny was. We are not sure. Some of them died with many people with them. Others, they died when they are on their own. Like the one who committed suicide, obviously she was all by herself when she died, she went to die. But that's, like they say, in, in, I know we have a statement, that's neither here nor there. I can say it's not, the, not here, but it's there now. Because where they are now, we cannot say, it's, it's there now, where they are now, whatever is going on. That one, the destiny is already determined. There's nothing you can do about it. So it's neither, not here anymore, but it's there now. So the question is, a day must come, and it will come, when you have to start there alone. If you died at 27, you start the same alone. Kauta at 27, 70 years older than you, you start alone there. And so we sing the song, you've got to start one day in judgment. You've got to start there by yourself. And no one here in IDC. <laughs> T.B. Joshua, all his team in Emmanuel, no, not what is it called, a synagogue uh, of all nations, out in Nigeria, nobody will start there with him. None of the members there will start with him. You've got to start there all by yourself. So what are we saying? Destiny guaranteed. But for that destiny to be guaranteed, one, you have to start at the cross. Two, you have to cooperate and work with him. And once you work with him, then your destiny, not only is it guaranteed, but you go there in triumph, not limping. How I wish the, the trumpet would blow now. And all of us go in triumph. And how about if you are left here saying, first our men are That's even an What is happening now? Where have they gone? No. At the cross. Where well, I first saw the lamb and the burden of my heart load away. It was there by faith I received my son. And now I am happy. Oh, I'm the cross, the cross. Where I first saw the light. And the balance of my life rode away. It was there by faith I see my sight.